actually before that, we were talking to everybody at Dior, and I had, I quite strongly felt that I wanted to work with Roman Gavras. Um, I'd wanted to work with him for a long time before, and I couldn't really find a thing to do with him. Um, and I got involved with that, and I, I remember bringing up his name, and everyone was like, Oof, I don't know about Roman Gavras, <laughs> like it's, too, it's maybe a little bit too far out there. As soon as everyone agreed to it, I started to think, wow, we want, everybody wants to do something kind of on the same page and then we're all thinking of doing something really different because Roman's style is so um, violent and from what I'd seen and I was thinking it's not, that doesn't really go with fragrance commercials. I want to do something different for, for me, just, I mean, regardless of anything else, I want to do, um, I felt like my career as an actor was going in a certain direction, I kind of, I felt like working with Roman and also doing something which is quite uh, quite mainstream but also edgy I think it would it kind of fit it into where I want my life to go and um, so I started talking to Roman about where what we could do with the you know with the, the love Dior giving us a lot of freedom to do kind of whatever we wanted basically and um, didn't want to make something kind of posy like not very modelly I mean um, wanted to do something that had some anger to it and had some kind of, had a bite to it and sexy as well. I mean, I, was kind of, I didn't think that, you know, a lot of uh, fragrance commercials, they have like a distance between the viewer and and, uh, and the people in, in the commercial. And I wanted to have something which is really visceral. And I think that's kind of Roman's style. And, um, and it seemed like the further we went when we were shooting, no one really ever stopped us. The Dior Homme man is, um, I think, someone who's just a, a little bit wild. I mean, a little bit kind of does whatever he wants. He's a bit of a free spirit. Um, not really scared of anything. Can kind of be whoever he wants to be at any time. Just someone who lives life on his own terms completely. Yeah, he's like the kind of guy who gets into fights in a tuxedo. <laughs> it's like, I mean, I mean, hopefully, anyway, that's hopefully that's how people interpret it. Um, yeah, there's something, yeah, there's something innately elegant, and well, especially in people who, in, in foreign people's eyes, about French people, but they kind of seem very classy, 100% of the time. Um, and I think even though there's a lot of energy and a lot, the the commercial is very visceral, it kind of. It does still have very natural elegance to it. Um, I've, I've, I've had difficulty sort of, you know, just being able to relax with a piece of paper. And Quite wild, um, hopefully pretty sexy. <laughs> um, something quite elegant, but fast-paced about it, and um, quite visceral and powerful. You think about Brazil, you think about soccer, football. Football, that's how we say it. Brazil is it. No, I don't play soccer, I wish. But my son can do it. I have two sons, actually. But my older son, he actually doesn't like it. But I forced him, because it, since it's a Brazilian, you know, culture. I'm planning on being in Brazil for the World Cup. Hopefully, I'll watch Brazil on the, on the finals. I really hope to be on the stadium. Hopefully on the grounds, you know, I don't know if I will get to get there, you know, on the grounds to feel all the energy from the people. I hope so. I don't play soccer anymore, but when I was a kid, my brother and his friends were always playing in the garden. So they let me join in in their game, but I wasn't very good at it and I'll kick them in the shin and then they'll get mad and throw me out. <laughs> I don't play soccer. In Brazil, the tradition is boys play soccer and girls play with fashion. Yeah, Iman is a good one to know. <laughs> it's like, what's up, bro, you know? If you see somebody cute in the street, you can say, gato, gato. If you're a gringo and you hear some Brazilians going around, you say, you're a gato. So you know what that means. It's uh, shine from the inside and feel confident. That's what people see when they look at you. I love being, like, being around someone that's just like oozes with like love for themselves, like not in an arrogant way or anything, but, you know, like even if they look like just like baggies, you know, they can so, still look like the same person in their Interview with Paul from Notes in Manchester, uh, Wednesday, the what's the date today? 25th. 25th, um, in the skate shop. So, Paul, introduce yourself. 
Um, I'm Paul Rogers and I'm the uh, manager of Note. Okay. And what kind of thing do you do at Note? We sell skateboards, trailers, clothes. Yeah, that sort of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> skateboards, trailers and clothes. Right. Um, and what inspires what you do? Um, not sure. Our, our hobbies, our interests, our, our, our friends, our fashions, music. I don't know. Whatever we're into. And is there a big um, skate scene in the northwest? And um, in particular, is there a skate scene in the northern quarter? I'd say, I don't know about the northern quarter. I mean, there's skate shops in the northern quarter, but there's a big skate scene in Manchester. Um, probably one of the biggest in the country. Um, there's big scenes in Liverpool and Leeds and Huddersfield too, but I think Manchester, given that, you know, with all the students and stuff, there, there's a particularly big scene here. So what have been the best parts of uh, best bits of your career and the worst bits? Um, in terms of doing a shop, I don't know. I mean, I think the best things have been like the video premieres and uh, like the get-togethers we've organised. Just any any excuse to bring the whole scene together, get everyone in one place at one time. Um, they've probably been the highlights and the most memorable things. Um, yeah, and I guess the fact. We managed to keep the shop open for 15 years and been like relatively successful. That's an overall quite a kind of, I don't know, a highlight for me. And what are your plans for the future? Um, well, for the minute, I don't know. We've just opened this new shop on Thomas Street. That's uh, for, the, for the future. I, I don't know, I haven't really thought much past that, just to carry on doing what we're doing. Um, yeah, perhaps try and grow the website side of the business. Uh, other than that, we're pretty happy with the presence we've got in there in Manchester. So, yeah, just work on our website a bit. Uh, why the change? Why did you change from the shop where you were to this shop? Both shops are both in the Northern Quarter. Yeah, we've still got the other shop. We're doing two shops now. Okay. We just ran out of room in that shop. We did this shop to concentrate on the clothes and the trainers and that shops to concentrate on the, the skateboards and the skateboard brands, the skateboard kind of t-shirts and shoes and stuff. This, this, this uh, shop's a bit more fashion, that one's strictly kind of hardware and proper hardcore skateboard stuff. Then you get to collect football t-shirts, not skateboarding t-shirts. So, I've got that to go with the world. I've got Russia 1977. And what's your favourite thing right now? Favourite thing in the shop? Uh, not necessarily in the shop, what's your favourite thing at the moment? Uh, in general? Um, I don't know, I, I personally like going out on, uh, on my road bike. I've got like a bike that I like riding up into the peaks and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, and just uh, you know, getting out of the town centre for a bit and chilling. I spend so much time in the town centre, it's, it's nice to get out into the country a bit on my, on my bike and go blow some steam off and stuff. So yeah, that's probably my favourite thing to do right now. What kind of bike have you got? Um, well, the, what, the road bike's like uh, the Bianchi bike. I don't know what much about it, but it's just a nice road bike, got gears on it and stuff, and nice and fast and light. Um, and do you still skate a lot? Me? No, not really. I mean, my background was more BMX, that's how I got into all this. I've always been into cycling and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, these days, just I, I tend to get one or two days off a week, and on those days I just get on my road bike, get out of the city. So yeah, I haven't really been down any skate parks or out on the streets lately, to be honest. Cool. Nice. Can I get a shot of you? What the what what I think the music, the lyrics. Yeah. Well, the lyrics, you know. It's just, what I'm saying is that it's, it's my belief that, you know, we, we're an integral part of this earth as humans, you know what I mean? Uh, and we should be of an intelligence and of awareness by now that we know it's not good to fight, it's not good to discriminate, it's not really good to, to knock, knock people down, do you know what I mean? It's, it's not good to 
when you're eating and living well, when people have nothing to eat, it's not good to be taking the piss out of people who don't know that nasty way of thinking. And otherwise, you know, your Amazonian Indian is getting kicked off his land so that McDonald's can go in space for some cows so we can all have cheap hamburgers. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is, we must all help each other, make each other aware. And although every man thinks, well, it's nothing to do with me, and why should I bother, and life's hard enough anyway. There's still something we can do, I know it. There's still something we can do from the fact that I'd like to be able to walk down the street, and you see the next man, and he goes, all right, how are you doing? <laughs> cool. Mm -hmm. What? <laughs> what is it? Pussy <laughs> doing that? Nobody's been a pussy doing that, do you know what I mean? And the people are more and more realising this. We have to create a vibe to ourselves. We need each other. You know, in a way, we're being run. You know, we, we're in a system. It's being run by some people who sit at the top. Uh -huh. They have a privileged position there. They're not using that position properly. But the director of public prosecutions gets caught in King's Cross. Like... You know, the Guinness guy, you know what I mean? Not happy with the millions he's already got, has to try and scam a few more million. We're dealing with greedy people who are on power trips that are... Yeah, and um, I'm one of the events managers at Soup Kitchen in the Northern Quarter. You have to make it yourself, so they're all like biologies, Mr. Gadget, squirrelling away in their in their shed. Myself or the venue. Um, creating these things. So yeah, yeah, some of them, I mean, you know, the, the last night, Bill, who made this fantastic here. discovery about yes. hippos, he had a heart I've been here for a year. Two sticks that's wrapped around a hamster run. Um, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a hamster run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we do food, and, and we do parties and we do gifts, and we do events. So we're a very important piece of kit that costs half a million quid that normally tests vibrations on jumbo jets. Um, so they're all sort of cobbled so together from all, from all different things. And, and the Burbot Monkeys, you know, I was using a garden one because there's been no elephants in, in, in Mombasa for 20 years, um, so I had to go and get this really, garden ornament to show you. And then I was, when I was doing the walk, I had, um, I had a, a, a broken pipe, actually broke halfway through the experiment. Um, I was thinking, this isn't going to work, but it, it, it still did work. So, you know, the thing about the lot of the stuff together, but the people that I've been out there, I talk to my dog or cat every day, and they understand every word, and I can understand that, you know, I can understand the noises that they make too. Is that a is that a version of the same thing? Because some people say they absolutely understand, you know, dog bark or a certain thing or cats. Yeah, or they sound different. Um, I used to do parties well, here. I, I, we didn't do pets uh, in this, so we, we just did about animals speaking to each other. But uh, I, mean, I do I'm know that, that dogs, for instance, so and the reason why they're object. man's best friends is because we have a really fantastic um, ability to read each other's emotions and communication. So um, you are, you really understand what it's saying all the time. The dogs are loving, adoring, and you know, the dogs and whatever. But there is definitely an ease of communication there. What do you think was the most special thing? Was it the dolphin? Uh, um, they have like a similar There were some surprises. Yeah. I mean, you the, could say that, yeah. The, the, the chimpanzees were extraordinary. Yeah, we were in last night's show. But what, some of the things that surprised me yeah. most were some of the smaller animals that you wouldn't like expect to have a sophisticated language. Um, yes, but then, like tonight's show, there's a, there's a, a bird called the chicken coop, and it's, it's in a got cool, it's only made up of four notes, but, but according to how those notes are played, um, it has a, a beautiful ending, that? language, which is really as do we, but it's got so much and it's so, it's so um, open the language that it requires the laws of grammar to control it. So there's a lot of teachers who are trying to discover the birds in your garden are completely different lights. We're done for time, but you can't really do it for the Deutsche Forest. Yeah, we're done for time, but you can't really do it for the Deutsche Forest. We're done for time, but you can't really do it for the Deutsche Forest. We're done for time, but you can't really do it for the Deutsche Forest. We're done for time, but you can't really do it for the Deutsche Forest. We're done for time, but you can't really do it for the Deutsche Forest. We're done for time, but you can't really do it for the Deutsche Forest. We're done for time, but you can't really do it for the Deutsche Forest. We're done for time, but you can't really do it for the Deutsche Forest. We're done for time, but you can't Favorite thing at the moment? Favorite thing? Yeah, like the yeah, ice cream or food. Or <laughs> Favorite thing at the moment? Oh, that's an obscure question. Uh, what music are you listening to at the moment? Anything particular?